All right, let's talk about invertible operators. So let's do part A. Since i minus t, the norm is less than 1, we know that sum from 0 to infinity, i minus t to the n, if we bring this inside, we, we know that we can, if we have an operator raised to the n, we can bring the, basically if we have s, st is less, norm of st is less than or equal to norm of s times norm of t, so the norm of s squared is less than or equal to the norm of s squared, i.e. s squared is less than or equal to s squared, and you can easily show by an inductive argument that s to the n is less than or equal to s to the n. So I think that's, if Fallen doesn't mention that at all, it's obvious enough that I don't think it requires a separate mention. So this is certainly less than or equal to the sum of this, and this is a geometric series. And thus, it's convergent. But since x is Bonnock, so is LXX. So this sum is equal to some R, which is in LXX, i.e. this converges, because we know that was the first proposition in this chapter, I think that in a Bonnock space, absolute, every, uh, right, every Cauchy sequence converges if and only if every absolutely, right, uh, a space is complete if and only if every absolutely convergent series converges. So, this is a complete space, we have an absolutely convergent series, and so it converges. So, here we go. What do we want to prove? We want to prove that it converges to T inverse, so I claim R is T inverse. Note that let's just figure out what I minus T of R is. This is the sum from 0 to infinity, I minus T to the n plus 1, because that extra I to the T can just be factored into each of the components, and that's equal to, you take the r, the original thing, but remember r had this zero term, so we have to subtract off i minus t of the zero, but that's precisely r minus i. So i minus t r equals r minus i, if you, fa if you evaluate this, this is just r minus t r, so r minus t r equals t r r minus t r equals r minus i, and so if you get rid of the r's, you get t r equals i, and hence r equals t inverse. So that's a. Now we want to prove that S is invertible. First, let's show that it's a bounded linear. Well, it's a bounded functional. It's S is implicitly the assumed to be linear because it doesn't really this this. S minus T here, this doesn't even really make sense if S is not a linear functional. And so S is implicitly assumed to be linear. And what else? S minus T 
use our good old friend the reverse triangle inequality, norm of s minus norm of t So, since t and well, t is finite and s minus t we know is less than t inverse inverse, but we know that t is in bounded linear functionals and t inverse is in bounded linear functionals. So t inverse is some finite number. And so its inverse is some finite number. Well, it also has to be positive because otherwise it wouldn't be invertible. So t inverse is some non-zero positive number. And so its inverse is also some non-zero positive number. And in particular, it's less than infinity. So s is s is bounded. That's because the difference between s and something of, it's because this thing is finite, or this, you have infinity is greater than this thing, which is greater than or equal to the difference between s and something of finite norm. So the norm of s has to be finite, which means s is bounded. And thus, s is in L X X. So then S T inverse is in L X X because both of them are. Um, well actually if S T inverse is less than or equal to S times T inverse. So there you go. Note that st inverse minus i. Now where is this coming from? We're trying to use, wait a minute, we're trying to use part a. Hmm. God, I don't want to install this. Okay, let's I'm just going to follow my notes and see where this leads me. This is less than or equal to s minus t times t inverse norm. Why is that? We just factored out the t inverse here. And what now? And this, what is this less than? We know s minus t is less than t inverse inverse, and that times t inverse is 1, so this is less than 1. So by part a, s t inverse is invertible. Hmm. It looks like I'm trying to use, yeah, this is fine because this is just using st inverse in place of t. And the only reason it threw me off was because we've got this minus sign here, but uh, newsflash, the norm of absolute, the, the, the norm of negative one is one. So that's not something we have to worry about. So this is invertible. So, S, which is ST inverse times T, it is a product of invertible maps and thus is invertible. So if t in L x x is invertible, so is 
Let's see here, what do I want to call it? Q-R-S-T-U. So is U, but that's like an open set. So is V, if V is in this ball of radius T inverse inverse of T. I have to scroll down a little. All right. Hence, the collection of invertible operators is open because every point contains an open neighborhood that's contained in the set. That's what it means to be open. And there we go. We finished the proof.